This video is an introduction to Laplace transform. We already know that integration and differentiation transform a function into another function. For example, let's look at some transformation of the quadratic function f of x equals x squared. We know that if we take the derivative of x squared, we're going to get 2x. So this means that differentiation transforms this quadratic function into a linear function. How about integration? Well, if we integrate x squared, we're going to have x cubed over 3 plus c, and that is cubic function. So integration transforms quadratic func function into cubic function. And if we evaluate the definite integral of x squared from 0 to 3, then we're going to obtain a constant, 9. We know that there are certain rules and laws that we should follow when we perform all these operations, right? Well, Laplace transform is another way to transform a function, and it has its own rules that we have to follow. When we perform Laplace transform, we change one function into another function of a different variable. So, for example, function f of t changes to a function of the variable s. And of course, the names of variables are not as important as how you perform Laplace transform. Here it's definition. First of all, the notation that we use for Laplace transform is this fancy letter L. Laplace transform of a function f of t. This is how it's defined. So Laplace transform is an improper integral of the following. It's the product of our function. See how we have f of t here? and the factor e to the power negative st. So that factor is always going to be there when you perform Laplace transform. Also notice that the variable of integration is t, which is the same as the variable of our function. But we have another variable, well, it's variable s. And because we're integrating in terms of t, it means that we treat variable s as the constant. And because of that, once we perform integration, then we're going to obtain a function, well, result of integration, but in terms of the variable s. Now, just a few notes here. Laplace transform was named after a French scholar, Pierre Simon Laplace. And that's why we pronounce Laplace in a French way. And also, I'd like to point out that you may come across a slightly different way of writing L for Laplace transform, and in some sources you might see this way of writing Laplace transform. They both mean the same. So let's perform Laplace transform for the function that we already talked about earlier, quadratic function. Now to be consistent with the definition of the Laplace transform, I'm using variable t instead of variable x. So my function is f of t equals t squared. Now, I have the definition of the Laplace transform here in the corner, so it can help me. And I'm going to start by writing the Laplace transform of the function t squared. According to the definition, I have to set up improper integral with limits from 0 to infinity of e to the power negative s t. Once again, this part will always be there when you perform Laplace transform. And then I have to write down my function, so t squared dt. So that's where I placed my function t squared. We know that to evaluate the improper integral, what we do, we change that upper limit that's infinity to variable, well, let's use b. So it's from 0 to b. And then we set up a limit with b that approaches infinity. And now everything else stays the same. e to the power negative st t squared dt. So what I'll do next, I will focus on evaluating this integral, integral of e to the power negative st, t squared dt, and then once I'm done with this, I will put everything back. So to evaluate this integral, we will be using integration by parts. So this is what I'm going to assign to u and dv, and then from here du equals to t dt, and v equals negative e to the power of negative a s t over s. So if you're not sure where I got that from, you just need to remember th two things. First, you need to remember that we treat s as the constant, and then with that in mind, you just need to integrate the right-hand side using basic u substitution. So once you perform basic u substitution, then you'll see that 
that's the result you get. Okay, I'm gonna continue with integration by parts. So first I have to write VU, so that's gonna be negative e to the power negative s t times t squared over s if I multiply u and v together and then minus integral v times du okay v is negative e to the power negative s t over s and then du is so times 2t dt that I will simplify, so I have negative e to the power negative s t t squared over s. Now from that integral I can take out the constants. Again, what are the constants? So of course 2 is the constant, and then s in the denominator is the constant. Um, and I am treating s in the denominator as the constant. And of course that negative sign can be also put in the front. So I will get plus 2 over s and then integral e to the power negative s t t dt. For the second integral we'll have to perform integration by parts again. And these are the parts I'm using for the formula. So let me write down what we have now. Okay, I'm going to copy down the first term, negative e to the power negative s t times t squared over s, and then plus, okay, and that this integral I'm evaluating using integration by parts again, right? So it's 2 over s will be right on the front, and then as I apply integration by parts formula, it's u times v, so it's negative e to the power negative s t over s times t and then minus integral and here I have to put v du v du v okay v is negative e to the power negative s t over s and du is just 1 dt or dt like that and this is what we'll get first term negative e to the power of negative s t t squared over s then I'm distributing 2 over s here and here so that means that the second term will be negative 2 e to the power of negative s t times t and then in the denominator it's going to be s times s so that's s squared and the last term, okay, let's be careful here. So first of all, negative in front of the integral, and then another negative inside. If I put them together, it's going to be plus. Now I have this coefficient that I'm distributing. And now what I have is, I'll have 2 over s that I have in the front times. Then within the integral, I do have what I treat as the constant, which is 1 over s, right? So it's going to be times 1 over s. That's this s over here. And now I'm going to integrate e to the power negative st, so that's going to be negative e to the power negative st over s. So let's put this expression back into the limit that we're trying to find. Okay, so I'm, I'm going back to where I left off, so I have limit as b approaches infinity and then we already integrated we just have to evaluate our expression at b and zero so let me put the expression here so it's negative e to the power negative s t t squared over s minus 2 e to the power negative s t times t over s squared minus 2 e to the power negative s t over s cubed. So I just multiplied those three in the denominator. And that has to be evaluated at b and 0. 
Now at this point, try not to confuse where you have to plug in B and zero. Um, recall the variable of integration is T. So that means that you're plugging in B and zero for T. So we know that we start with the upper limit. So first we're gonna plug in B. Now, as I am plugging in B, since after that I will have to obtain the limit, um, I will prepare a thing for me so it's a little bit more convenient. What I'll do, I will, rem I will, what I'll do, I'll place all E's, since they have negative powers, I will place them in the denominator and switch the power, and switch sign of the power. So it's gonna be negative, in the numerator I have B squared over, in the denominator it's negative, in the denominator, it's e to the power s times b, and then times s. Next one, negative 2 times b over e to the power s times b times s squared minus 2 over e to the power s times b times s cubed. So let's see what happens when we're plugging in 0 for t. Well, as I plug in 0 for t in the first expression, the whole expression turns into 0, right? So it's plus 0. As I plug in 0 into the second expression, it also turns into 0 because I have t over here, so it's plus another 0. And then plus, as I plug in 0 into the third term, then I get the following. So it's 2 times e to the power 0, right? Negative, negative s times 0 gives me 0 over s cubed. And now it's time to apply the limit. So what happens with each term when b approaches infinity? I'll do that step quickly, so I'm assume that you already have experience with finding limits. So when we look at the first term, initially we get infinity over infinity. It's undefined, but we can apply L'Hopital's rule. If we apply L'Hopital's rule twice, we'll end up with variable b only in the denominator. And as the denominator gets infinitely large, the overall expression gets infinitely small, so it approaches zero. So we get zero. Similar idea in this, with the second term. Initially, we get infinity over infinity, but as we apply the L'Hopital's rule, we'll have constant in the numerator and then infinity in the denominator well that fraction approaches zero as well so that equals zero third term we can see right away how it approaches zero right it's the constant numerator and then denominator that approaches infinity so overall fraction approaches zero now of course those two are just zeros and then finally when we look at the last term we see that there is no b variable b in that term so it means that we treat this term as the constant. See how it doesn't have b involved? So it's not being affected by, by the limit. So that means that the result of the limit is just that last term. And of course, e to the power of 0 is 1. So I'm going to write it as 2 over s to the third power. And that will be the answer. This result is what we called the Laplace transform of the function f of t equals t squared. Now, as you can see, it's, it's a somewhat tedious process, right, to perform all that integration, and you can only imagine what happens as the power goes up. What if it was not quadratic function, but t raised to the 10th power? We would have to repeatedly perform integration by parts, right? Well, the good news is that we have what's called table of Laplace transforms. It lists general forms of various functions and their Laplace transforms. For example, this is what table is going to say for the power function. Laplace transform of a function that has a form t to the power n, so t raised to you know, any power that's an integer, equals n factorial over s to the power n plus 1. Let's verify that our answer is consistent with this formula. So what is n in our example? Well, we have t squared. So in our example, n equals 2, right? That means that 
the result should be n factorial or 2 factorial in the numerator. Well, what is 2 factorial? That's 2. Okay, that's that works. And in the denominator, it should be s to the power n plus 1. So it's 2 plus 1. Well, that's s to the power 3. Okay, so we got the correct result. And now, as you can see, if your power is 10, you can easily obtain the result. Once again, we can see that Laplace transform, transform a function, in our case it was function t squared, into another function of variable s. So Laplace transform of the function t squared resulted in the function 2 over s cubed.